Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have the skills revealed for the other legendary archer commander coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. This is Cho Young, archer, garrison, and defense commander. So today we're going to go over all of the skills and what we understand about how this commander is going to work. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Really quick, if you appreciate breaking news for Rise of Kingdoms, drop a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing for more. Okay, jumping into the active skill, we see a couple of things here that are a, a little bit weird. Uh, it says that it is a single target type except that we know this is a five target aoe now according to support this is a five target circular aoe and here we have a very blurry animation of this active skill you can see very clearly though despite it being blurry that this is in fact a circular aoe which is very exciting and honestly this skill itself it looks like it just shoots out arrows in a circle around the commander instead of shooting up and then down like YSG or Yuge Liang I think the skill looks pretty good but needless to say this target type is a little bit misleading and I'll explain to you why it says single target type but it is a 1000 rage requirement and this skill just like the commander we covered yesterday Shajar if you missed that video check her out she's the open field commander this is going to be the mightiest governor commander most likely but there's two components to this skill okay first of all there is a 10 second buff that is applied to the commander I'm calling it a buff we don't know exactly how it's going to work until it comes into the game but most likely it's going to be some self-applied buff to your commander and it says for the next 10 seconds whenever this commander heals a target they also deal 80 percent of the heal strength as true damage to up to five nearby enemy troops every additional target reduces the damage dealt by each target by 15 percent that part is very standard the second part of the skill says this commander's troop is also mighty healed for a large portion of its slightly wounded units with a healing factor of 1400 so literally this is the same healing factor as richard except it is mighty healing okay so this is significantly better than Richard's healing factor even though it looks like it would be about the same it is not we'll talk about that in just a minute but the other thing that's really important to notice here is that it says it deals 80 percent with a percentage affected by their troops attack now this is something that I mentioned in yesterday's video with Shajar and I said that this was a little bit odd right because one of the things that it says at the bottom here is that true damage is not affected by the attacking troops attack attribute and this is true what this is saying and this was pointed out by a few people in the comment section below of my of my previous video is that the amount the percentage of the healing that you will be dealing as damage is determined by your attack stat and 80 percent is probably the cap okay so most likely you know if you have at least 80 percent attack on your army you're going to get the maximum amount of mighty healing i'm assuming that's the cap because it's it's what's shown in these images and you'll see throughout this video that it shows you the numbers for everything being maxed so it could be the case that if your army doesn't have 80 percent attack bonus then maybe this number is lower we'll have to see when this commander comes into the game maybe it's the case that for example with shajar her 80 percent was actually in yellow which means that could fluctuate whereas with Cho it is not highlighted here so maybe he is always at 80 percent whereas hers fluctuates it's going to be really hard to tell and I can't wait for them to come in the game so we know for sure but it seems to be the case that the part in the parentheses is just saying that your attack bonus is what's going to determine what percentage of the heal will be dealt as damage so for example you know and again maybe this only applies to Shajar because hers is in yellow and implying that this fluctuates but let's say that you only have 60 percent attack bonus on the army then you're only going to get a 60 percent of the heal strength as true damage that's most likely what this means that's what is the most logical to me uh because again otherwise the true damage shouldn't be affected by attack anyway so that's that now the other thing that I found a little bit confusing and this was the case for Shajar as well is that it says whenever this commander heals a target and one of the questions that I had was is this self heal also going to be considered a target getting healed right and from what I can tell based on supports answer to this the answer is yes so what I think is going to happen here is that you're going to trigger your active skill it's going to give you this ever faithful buff for 10 seconds then you're going to heal yourself for 1400 mighty healing factor and when you do because it's in that 10 second window then you're going to take 80 percent of that heal strength 
and deal it as true damage to five targets the reason that it says a target and not whenever you heal yourself is because if we look at for example shajar's third skill you'll see that she can heal other units and so it's not only when you heal yourself it's when you heal anybody and that's why it says a target and not yourself okay i think this wording is a little bit misleading i think it should say whenever this commander heals itself or a target i think it should clarify because technically maybe this that's not how it works we'll have to wait and see but based on support's answer it does seem to be the case that both shajar and cho will trigger their damage on their own heal from their own active skill so it's not like you have to wait for the next skill cycle for it to pop for you to heal it's going to be dealing most likely damage from the initial cast okay so this is very important stuff i will talk about the damage factor here in just a second we'll get into that it has to do with how mighty healing works but first i want to go over the rest of the skills for cho the second skill here says this commander's archer units gain 30 percent defense and 5 percent march speed if this commander's troop only contains archer units it deals 10 percent more normal damage now this is a little bit weird right because we look at shajar and we look at cho and it seems like there's a lot of um normal damage manipulation here right we see that you take 10 percent less normal damage on the third skill from uh, shajar we look at the expertise of shajar she deals 20 percent more normal damage there's lots of normal damage and manipulation here for commanders that do not have skills that deal damage based on normal damage right so i don't really understand why there's so much normal damage emphasis on these commanders when true damage is not affected by normal damage and you know we have skill damage on shajar that's not affected by normal damage so not really sure there but uh, at the end of the day more normal damage means that you're going to be dealing more damage the white numbers every single turn and this is after all a garrison commander and so that will be very helpful for your garrison scenarios very tanky skill here very small amount of mar march speed honestly however uh it's worth noting that a lot of times we don't see any march speed on garrison commanders so having five percent is better than normal but it is still pretty low now if we pair these two commanders together you're getting a total of 25 percent march speed which is better than we currently have right now so for example if you're using Yue Liang with Herman Prime this Archer comm commander pairing paired together will be faster than that which is I mean for a garrison commander it's, it's, it's just funny it's just funny to me anyway the third skill says this commander's troop takes 20 percent less normal damage once again we see normal damage uh manipulation however it makes sense to take less normal damage because this is probably a garrison that is attempting to counter the new CPO Emilianus rally that is the most recent infantry rally we'll talk about why it might not counter it um it, it will let me just be clear it will counter it but it doesn't have perfect synergy for countering it which is a little bit weird um it says if this commander is serving as a garrison commander so this will not work in the field whenever their garrison is hit with a basic attack it has a 20 percent chance to negate all of its current targets health and defense buffs for the next five seconds so very interesting stuff here it is literally negating the rallies or i guess the swarming troops as well it's negating their defense and health buffs now if we take a look at cpo emilianus's second skill it says that he gets a 30 percent infantry health bonus if you're leading a rally attack so it's possible that that 30 percent bonus could be removed from this third skill here it's really hard to tell we'll have to wait and see this says buffs whereas cpo emilianus's skill says bonus so maybe it will maybe it won't maybe this only removes the health and defense buffs that are you know a timed actual buff like for example mulan's active skill gives you a bonus to health and defense for a certain number of seconds and then it goes away maybe this only negates that type of buff and not just the permanent bonus that you would see on cpu emilianus we'll have to wait and see when the test results show up and finally we look at the fourth skill it says if the current target of this commander's troop is a rallied army increases all healing this because this commander's troop receives by 45 percent so that is a massive increase to the damage you're going to be dealing on the active skill here because you're dealing damage based on your heal strength and that includes the bonuses that you have to your healing it says it right here so 45 percent bonus to your heal strength is insane also whenever this commander's troop uses an active skill the target loses 10 percent health for seven seconds and this can stack up to five times so you can get up to 50 percent health reduction over time and it says its duration resets whenever it 
gains another stack is most likely what it says here so up to a 50 percent health reduction to the rally remember this part of the skill only works when you are attacking a rallied army now it's worth noting that you don't actually have to be in a garrison for this to work you could be a field army hitting a rally so if you're going to be swarming down a rally for example um, you will still be hitting a rally the target of your army will still be a rallied army and therefore you will still get this when you're swarming down a rally and so having a rally have 50 percent less health from swarmers is going to be insane also because that will trigger a stronger active skill here so clipping nearby targets that are just standing there you're hitting them with that aoe you're getting really nice damage off which is nice and finally the expertise says you deal 25 percent more counter attack damage and if the target troop has free, fewer units than this commander's troop, you deal another 15% counterattack damage. So imagine a world where you are using a Cho garrison and your enemy thinks that they're going to swarm you down. Well, if you have a full garrison, then you are always going to have more troops than the target, right? Because the target is going to be swarming units. Let's say they have 450,000 units. Well, your garrison has 2 million. They're always going to have fewer units than you. And therefore you will always be dealing 40% more counterattack damage to swarming units which is insane so it seems like it's going to be very hard to swarm this garrison down especially given the fact that it is going to just be healing itself as you're doing that and it has a bunch of defense normal damage bonus normal damage taken reduction this seems like a very anti-swarm garrison which is going to be very very powerful now the other thing worth pointing out here though is that the active skill and the second skill work in the field so right away a 5511 seems viable third skill has half of its skill viable in the open field so you get 20 percent less normal damage taken which is nice so you could in theory do a 5551 the fourth skill literally doesn't do anything unless you're hitting a rally so you don't need that for open field fighting and open field fighting typically most of your damage is not coming for counter from counter attack damage at all right and so when you're fighting the open field you don't really need that expertise either um this this expertise is great for garrisons it's not it's okay for field fighting but not anything insane so really a 5511 or a 5551 for this commander would definitely be field viable really i would say 5511 is probably the sweet spot i think bumping this from 4 to 20 it, it, is it worth the extra sculptures probably not right it, we're talking about what is it five five one one is 190 legendary commander sculptures five 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 one is 380 so it's twice as many sculptures just to get 16 percent more normal damage reduction i don't know if that it's, it doesn't seem worth it to me um but it's worth noting that you could do that if you wanted the best that you could without maxing it okay now before i said it seems like this commander was built to counter cpu emilianus but at the same time it doesn't perfectly counter it because if we look here it says that you're debuffing the target's health for seven seconds it's up to 50 percent if we look over here at cpu emilianus he does shrug off health debuffs right it's on his third skill here it says whenever this troop is hit with a basic attack it has a 30 percent chance to dispel all health and defense debuffs currently affecting it and for the next three seconds it will gain immunity to health and defense debuffs and take 25 percent less normal damage with a five second cooldown so it's a 30 percent chance that means every one in let's say one in three and a half turns you're going to be procking this you know removal of those debuffs and Cho is applying a health debuff every you know every skill cycle and so it's going to be the active skill of the primary you take 10 percent less health the active skill of the secondary you take 10 percent less health unless there's a cooldown here uh obviously it's cut off so we don't know what the bottom of the skill says maybe there's a cooldown maybe you won't be able to double stack it for every skill cycle i don't know why they would be i mean it's it's based on active skills so i don't know why this would be i don't know why there would be a cooldown there because you're not really going to be able to like abuse this right unless you like paired it with like i don't know unless unless herald is converted into an archer type for certain kbks and then you could use stamford bridge to pop it a bunch then you might be able to abuse this but i i doubt it right i doubt it we'll have to wait and see of course but basically you know every skill cycle you're gonna take let's say 20 percent health reduction because both commanders are gonna cast and then every like three and a half turns you know you're just gonna be removing that with cpo emilianus now there's a cooldown let's say you know let's say on average because of the cooldown you get it every seven seven turns right it's still going to be you know about as fast or faster of a removal on average right because it is a chance so it's on average um i don't know it just seems weird that cpo already has a built-in like 
counter or dispel to the health debuff for the garrison that's supposed to counter him now i will say with all of the normal damage taken reduction and the fact that it is very anti-swarm and the fact that it is an archer commander it still could be uh, a very good counter to cpu emilianus but it is worth pointing out that it is not a perfect counter because this massive health reduction can still be just dispelled by CPO Emilianus. So we'll have to wait and see. But all in all, I think this is a very, very powerful garrison. Now, one thing that is going to make or break this garrison commander is how much damage we're dealing here, right? And you might be thinking, okay, well, Omniarch, let's say 80% is the maximum, okay? And it's 1400 healing factor. So let's just do some quick math here. 80% of 1400 is 1120. So you're saying it's a 1120 damage factor of true damage to five targets, which means it's going to be further reduced for every additional target. It sounds really bad on paper. I'm going to be honest with you. It sounds horrible on paper, right? Well, previously with the help of Speco, we figured out most likely what the mighty healing formula is. And so if we plug in the numbers from Cho here into that mighty healing formula, I'm assuming a base, a base health of 212, 1400 healing factor. We know it's a five target AOE. If we have 2 million units, as you would expect from like a flag, for example, then a normal heal with the 45% bonus would be 13,000, but mighty healing would be 67,000. So it's literally 500% better than a regular heal. It's literally almost five times better, which is actually insane. And since we know that he's dealing 80% of his healing factor as damage, we have a damage of 53,734. So that's going to be a five target AOE, 53,000. Now, again, this is assuming that you have, you know, this as your base health. And that you have two million units and that there's no cap on the mighty healing factor okay so while the damage output here might be a little bit on the lower side because it's only you know 53,000. also you have to take into account the you know the rally and the nearby enemy's health that's something that that is also going to come into play here not their defense of course because remember this is true damage so again you might be looking at this and saying that's not that big of a number um which is is true but again it is ignoring your defense okay uh, and it's a five target AOE and you're getting a mega heal off at the same time. All right. So I think this is going to be deceptively good. Now we can also assume, let's say it, you know, you're not hitting a rally. Let's just remove that 45% bonus there. And the number does drop pretty dramatically, but again, this is ignoring the enemy's defense and you're getting a big heal off. So we'll have to wait and see, you know, just how good this is going to be in rise of kingdoms when he does show up in the game. And of course, you know, if this is like a pass, for example, like, let's say you have 3 million units, this scales like even more insane, right? Like we're talking about some insane numbers here. So I don't know. This seems like the perfect commander to guard a fortress. It's got a five target circular AOE. So it's not perfect for passes, but I do think that you will want to do that. A lot of times you don't swarm down passes, right? A lot of times it's like double rallied or something along those lines. But as an anti swarm commander, I think this is going to be great for flags in Kingsland and especially good for defending fortresses. And again, as a 5 5 1 1 commander in the open field, I think you're going to be doing pretty good things. Now, would Shajar actually be the best pair for this commander? Well, it you know if we look at her kit as a secondary she's also going to be dealing a massive amount of true damage to a single target which is going to be really great for garrison and also she gives him a ton of health which he desperately needs further normal damage taken reduction so if you're trying to counter that infantry rally however where she falls apart here is that you have to be a field troop for the third skill so the entirety of the third skill does not work in a garrison, which is a down, a huge bummer, right? And also the fourth skill says this commander's troop takes 20% less damage while on the map. So again, in a garrison, this will not work. Also the mega heal here only works on the map as well. So both the third and fourth skill do not work in a garrison. And so, I mean, I don't know. It seems like you would, you know, the knee jerk reaction would be to pair these two together in a garrison. But at the same time, it's like, you're literally not, there's two of your skills that aren't working here. So I don't know if she's the best pair. Obviously the synergy with mighty healing is huge the true damage i mean it's it's she's going to be dealing more damage by the way because of the 45 percent bonus um from the fourth skill here on show so overall like there is synergy here but is it enough to compensate for the fact that two skills will literally not be doing anything it's really hard to say now you will be double healing yourself which is a ton of healing for a garrison and every time you do you're going to be getting the expertise bonus from shajar so like you're going to heal with Cho, get this bonus, and then you're going to, you know, skip a turn and then she's going to heal. 
and then you're going to get this bonus again right because if you look here as a secondary she has a 2000 healing factor so all in all um you know you're going to get the double proc there's no cooldown on this expertise so you're going to get that 10 percent defense for probably four or five total seconds I don't remember exactly what the timing would be like there and then you know you're gonna go through your skill cycle again especially if this is getting swarmed you're gonna go through it quite quickly and again you do have a ton of defense and a ton of health on this commander pairing but you're missing out on you know the other two skills so who else could you pair here with Cho with him as the primary it could be Dito right I mean she is kind of built to counter the benefits that Tar gets on his active skill from being surrounded right however you know she does take less skill damage and if you're using CB Emilianus he's dealing smite damage and so there's not perfect synergy there you would kind of be using you know she's the counter to Tarek and then Cho is the counter to CB Emilianus uh, and so you'd be like directly countering that exact rally. That's might be when you would use Dito here as, as a pair. A Manatore is immune to being silenced. And we know that CPU Emilianus does do some silencing. So maybe you would throw her in there. But the problem with this is that her damage factor is just so low these days. It's just ridiculously low. So I don't know if that's going to be the answer. Could we just use Jue Liang and then just have two, five target AOE commanders, right? Like that could be the case and you're debuffing the target you're also getting 30 percent health with the 30 percent defense on Cho now the downside here is that there's no attack on this army which normally you know for true damage you don't care about but again if we take a look at the wording of that active skill um it might be the case that you need attack to maximize this percentage right I mean that's the only reason why I could see them putting this thing in parentheses so I'm not really sure who the perfect pairing is. It's probably Dito, but it could be Jue Leung or maybe, or maybe the synergy with Shajar is just so good that you don't care. She's missing two skills. It's going to be really hard to say. Um, overall though, this commander pairing is extremely interesting as an open field commander pairing. Obviously you would still use Cho as the primary, her as the secondary to get all this interesting bonuses off here. Um, you could do a five, five, one, one for both of these commanders and have a very interesting tanky supportive archer march historically support units haven't been super popular out in the open field um you could definitely do that i'm not sure if you you know we'd have to wait and see if that's actually good enough to do but for a budget build i mean 5511 for both of these seems incredibly good a total of 380 legendary commander sculptures and you're popping off uh, guys, let me know what you think about Cho in the comment section below. I think his active skill is going to be deceptively good. People are not going to expect to get hit by so much damage factor from that heal. I really can't wait to see how this commander works in the game and if he's going to be as anti swarm as we think he's going to be. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out to the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it. While you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace